do you did your daughter run out of the dinner table because the family members were making too much noise with their eating utensils, their knives, spoons, forks? Does your husband constantly tell you to stop sniffling? Do you want to tell your colleagues at work to stop clicking their pen and you feel like running out of the office? Well, these difficulties are not you or loved ones trying to be difficult. It's actually a psychological condition called misophonia. Hi, I'm Rachel Brazell, a licensed mental health counselor. And today I'd like to give you a deeper understanding of misophonia. We'll go into the triggers, general information about it, the impact, possible causes, and in the future, in the near future, we will then have a part two and we'll discuss some treatment options. Um, I hope to take questions both today and next time as well. So let's get started. What is misophonia? The literal definition, miso means hatred, phonia of sound, a hatred of sound. Basically, it's a decreased tolerance of certain triggering sounds. Um, it is a lot more common than people believe. 20% of the population has misophonia, one out of every five people, be it moderate, mild, moderate, or severe. So many people are struggling with this and it wasn't known before. It's actually um, not yet even in the DSM-5. It is not yet recognized as a disorder, but I believe very soon it will be. And it will either be a separate disorder or it will be linked to another disorder. Um, it's not a regular annoyance of sound. We all get annoyed at sounds at different parts in our day or lives. If we're hungry, tired, stressed, had a conflict, we're going to get annoyed at sounds, whether it's a siren, a honking, children yelling, um, anything. But that's not misophonia. Individuals who struggle with misophonia pay attention and focus on sounds that other individuals are not really affected by. They don't have that strong emotional reaction that a person that suffers from misophonia has. What's interesting about misophonia is a trigger sound coming from one person will bother them, but the same exact sound coming from somebody else will have no effect on them. And that's another hallmark of misophonia. What are some of the triggers that individuals suffer from? Um, and I'm only going to name a few. Um, it could go from sniffling, breathing, snoring, sneezing, coughing, eating, slurping, swallowing, um, clicking a pen, rustling papers, to the environment of a bird chirping, hunking, water dripping, clock ticking, and that's just to name a few. When does misophonia begin? When does it develop? So research, research shows that it most often happens in the teenage years, around 13, but it could certainly begin sooner or after that. It could even happen in any time of adulthood. Huge question is, where does misophonia come from? What causes it? So again, it is still being researched and we don't have definitive answers, but causes may include differences in brain structure, particularly in the area where sound and um, emotions, where, the, where in the brain where sound and emotions are processed. Also family history, genetics may play a role. There's comorbidity with other disorders such as depression, anxiety, OCD, OCPD, um, Tourette syndrome, ADHD, autism spectrum, and many individuals who suffer from misophonia also struggle with obsessive and compulsive traits. How does a person know if they or a loved one is suffering from misophonia or just very annoyed by certain sounds? Well, like I mentioned, it is not yet in the DSM-5 um, it's not yet recognized as a separate disorder, so there is no formal diagnosis. 
But a way that a person knows they or a loved one is suffering from misophonia is how it impacts their daily life. If it impacts and has an effect on their quality of life and mental health, particularly in the area of their relationships, be it at home or at the office, at home or in their professional life, um, that's a sure sign that it's misophonia. And if you're uncertain, it's a good idea to visit with a professional that is well-versed with misophonia and together you can collaborate to understand if it is misophonia and the best line of treatment to help yourself. Let's discuss now some of the symptom, symptoms and impact of misophonia. And this is really important because if you are suffering from misophonia, you need to accept and acknowledge how much you're suffering and get the help you deserve. And if a loved one is suffering, you need to know how they're being impacted on so many fronts. A person that suffers from misophonia is impacted on all fronts, emotional, physical, and behavioral. Some of the emotions that come up for a person that struggles with misophonia, from irritation to anger to extreme rage. How dare you? Feelings of betrayal. How could you make that noise when you know it bothers me? Anxiety, fear, fear that the trigger sound will happen just when you see the person. You have this huge anxiety and fear that you're going to react. Some of the physical um, symptoms would be similar to that of a person that's having a panic attack. Um, their body starts shaking, their heart races, they start sweating. And they're also impacted behaviorally from glaring at the person making the noise or yelling at them to try to get them to stop to that, to that fight flight response of your body telling you, help, get me out of here. Um, and what happens is that there, you begin to have many avoidances. You avoid joining the dinner table or other functions, and you begin isolating, um, and it becomes very lonely, and your world becomes smaller. So it's very important to know how a person is impacted from misophonia. Okay. In general, what happens when a person suffers from misophonia is their reaction goes, their emotional reaction goes from zero to 180 very quickly. And they have a huge response. And then when they calm down, they regret the response they had. But when they're triggered again, they have the same response. Unless of course they get the help that they deserve and that's what we're going to discuss next time, the different treatment options that are out there, as well as coping strategies, and of course, the, um, the gold standard would be to work on the emotional acceptance of misophonia, but we're going to discuss that next time. I do want to get to some of the questions that were sent in. Okay, so let's do number one. How does my brain know who to get triggered from? Two people can be sniffling. One doesn't bother me and one makes me so mad. I feel like I want to hurt them. I don't, but it's the feeling I have. Oh my goodness, this is so, so frustrating. And you explained yourself so clearly. This is frustrating for you because you're asking yourself, how could this happen? That this person is really bothering me and from another person it doesn't. And then the person who you are upset with says, what's so bad if I make that noise? The other person makes the same exact noise and you're not even upset with them and they don't understand that. Well, actually, this is one of the hallmarks of misophonia, that you're triggered from one person and the same exact trigger is not triggering from another person. And the answer is that your unique brain chemistry and experience makes this happen. Let me explain. Um, let's say you're, I'm going to do it with an example because I think that would be easiest. Let's say you're, ha you're at the dinner table and your son and daughter are sitting there and your son and daughter are having an argument, a huge conflict. 
and then your son starts eating and he makes noise with his utensils. All of a sudden, your daughter has a negative association between her brother and the sound. And the brain links these two together and there's a negative association. And that's very often how it begins. So it makes perfect sense what you're describing. Um, also, sometimes when a person that we're close to and we have a close attachment with makes a certain noise, we feel like, how dare you? You know that this bothers me. Why can't you be more sensitive and careful to what hurts me and my feelings? And also sometimes we feel when it's coming from a certain person that we have more control to stop them from making that triggering noise. So I hope that helps. Let's go to the next question. As someone who grew up constantly being misunderstood and ridiculed because of my misophonia, a lot of those negative voices became my internal voices and I struggled a lot with self-esteem. How can I overcome this when I still, still feel like a lot of it was my fault because of my reactions to triggers? Okay. Unfortunately, this experience is all too common. Many of us, when we're younger, we have challenges and they're misunderstood and they're ridiculed in our home. And not because the people wanted to misunderstand or ridicule us, but that's, they didn't understand it and we didn't understand it. And misophonia is one such case. And really, years ago, it wasn't even known or understood. So knowledge is power. The first step to healing is to gain the knowledge of where does misophonia come from, how does it develop, and the more knowledge you have in this area from this live and any other information you can gather, the more you'll realize that this is not your fault and the guilt will leave and all that feeling of shame and embarrassment will hopefully disappear. But if you're still struggling with self-esteem, um, either in therapy or not, you can work on that as we all need to work on our self-image and our self-esteem. Um, and whether that's with building healthy relationships or focusing on your strengths, there are so many ways that you could focus on your self-esteem. I'm hoping that from this question, what I understood is I believe that you already worked on the actual misophonia and your triggers. If, however, you haven't, now is the time to take that time and work with a professional so that these triggers do not evoke the same response. Okay, I'll take one more question now. Can you notice you may have misophonia at nearly 30? Absolutely. Misophonia can develop at any age from teenage, earlier, adulthood. And it's even possible that you had misophonia when you were younger, but it was much more mild and you didn't notice it. So now's the time to get the help that you deserve. So I hope to come on again very soon to discuss the treatment options. And um, I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.